take a look at breaking down uh, the Nikki Ryan exchange versus Renee Souza. Okay, so Nikki Ryan was doing a good job of hip heisting up, trying to get in on the legs. So on one of those exchanges, Nikki went into like the double Koichi. Uh, Renee kind of stepped back and forced like a half guard position here, and he started to thread his arm through. Now, anytime someone threads his arm through, whether you're in a knee shield or like a butterfly situation, you can always look to hit an arm drag. Uh, Philippe Pena is really good at this. Uh, Will Flanagan's done a series on this as well. Now, what Nicky Ryan from here did was he won, he made sure his knee was at the shoulder line. Now, sometimes I feel like I have a hard time keeping this here. It'll kind of like smash the shoulder down. So what you can do is you can use your collar tie arm to bring your elbow inside your knee and reinforce it. Now from here, he took his hand through to the tricep, pushed the head off center, extracted his knee, pendulum his way up like so. Now, in order to deal with the threat of the back tape, what Renee started doing is he started building hip height. And as he was building hip height, Nikki initially went in on a single. When he noticed that the battle for hip height was too high, he actually switched to the waist. Now from here, he started actually trying to come up. When that failed, he started pulling him backwards. So as he was pulling him backwards, now the threat of the back take is there. So what he had to do was he had to expose his own back to the floor. And this is where Nikki followed him up. And he tried to initially use that back exposure to start passing. From here, he brought his knees into his chest to kind of avoid that north-south position, where now Nikki went into that, that camping spot here. Now, as he went into that camping spot, he noticed he overextended this top leg like so. So Nikki reached back for the heel hook. Now, in a perfect world, of course, I'm sure he would have loved to catch it, but what Rene did is he extended his leg and started turning his knee away to hide his heel. Now, as that happened, Nikki shot, and they went into cross Ashi. From here, what Rene did is he started building good height on his knee, he started clearing his knee line by pushing with this hand. And from here, he was trying to go into a wedging back take, which is where they put the knee in the hip pocket. They start to roll and expose your back. Now, let's change the angle a little bit. Now, Nikki's really good at attacking the back, so I'm sure he knew to take away that space. So as he felt Rene die, he just posted right on the shin and knee. And now as Rene rolled, Nikki just posted on the throat with his feet to the inside and now he came up from here as he came up he started looking to pass the guard now on the opposite side now from here he i can't remember if he had a c grip or a v grip but what he did with this hand is he prevented him from locking his legs from here he took a cross shoulder pose to try to go into high step passing renee did his research and was well aware of that so what renee did is he took a two on one like so from this two on one, Nikki pummeled that hand inside, stripped the wrist, put him on his side, and now he pummeled through. Now instead of going to knee on belly, from here, he actually dropped his knee right into the hip pocket. And from here, he took like a half Nelson grip right on the neck. And from here, he switched his base from his left leg onto his right leg so that he could hop over and start to expose the back. Now in a perfect world, as you do this move, that trail leg becomes your first hook. You take his back off the floor, like so. But like I said, Renee was really wise. And as he hopped over, Renee actually posted his hands right on the hook, and they ended up pulling his back off the floor into a seated position here. Now from the seated position, he locked up a chest lock, extracted that Nelson hand, and switched on over into a seat belt. And from here, the, the battle to take the back, expose the hooks, become like so, he uh, needed chest, and then they ended up like so. And as you saw, eventually he built height. He tried a quarter Nelson. So let's break that down all again. Anytime you're in a situation like so, keeping this knee nice and high so that they can't smash this knee down together like so. So if you have pretty flexible long legs, you can just keep your knee like this, collar tie. A lot of times, like I said, I feel a lot of pressure on my knee, so I'll use my own collar tie to reinforce my, my, uh, my frame. Now I just dig that in, get the head off center, extract, try to get to the back. Of course, if he doesn't react, we're always looking to get above. If he starts coming up, if we feel that we can build height on a single, great. But sometimes you just kind of feel uh, below him to, or too low on him. So oftentimes you'll have to switch to the waist and try to start pulling him backwards. Now from here, you make, wait, he makes that same choice, right? If he doesn't react, his back gets exposed. So you force him to put his back on the floor, you keep that drag grip, and you try to get all the way around. From here, I'm trying to beat his knees with my collar. 
and hopefully get here. But again, Renee, the savvy competitor, he got those knees and shins right in front of the collarbone. So he ended up switching back into that camp. From here, of course, you can pass, but he felt that leg was overextended. As he saw the shoulders turn, he also turned his knee and they ended up here. Now he builds up height, posting on my leg, went for the wedge, blocked, go ahead, post it on the throat to make space, pummel this leg back inside, build height. Now we're here, keeping the legs separated so he doesn't trap me. Once I lock this up, it's kind of hard to high up, so keeping that separate is really good. Uh, another match, Dante Leone, is really good at making sure they don't lock those ankles up. Now he went cross shoulder pose, he stripped, he pummeled, high stepped, dropped, get that half Nelson grip, shift your weight so that that left leg is light. He lifted, he cleared, he blocked the hook with his hands, so he took his back off the floor. So now there's both lower and upper back exposure. And now you switch, start getting that seat belt. And from here, eventually end up with two hooks. And then eventually after all the stuff standing, he ended up with a nice body triangle. All right, so let's give that a shot. Three, two, one. All right, so now, uh, Let's look at from the back. Uh, obviously, Nicky Ryan didn't end up finishing. I'm sure he would have loved to. Um, so from here, they ended up with a body triangle. Now, you saw this a lot in the match with Giancarlo and J-Rod a few, I don't know, almost a year ago, is Giancarlo kept the body triangle. Now, this makes excellent control, but it makes finishing the, uh, the strangle hard sometimes. Now, when you unlock your legs, of course, you can start trapping hands, making it easier to start getting uh, the strangle. But that comes at a price, right? Where now my legs are unlocked. If this guy's you know, pretty explosive like Rene is, he can start turning away and going into spinning escapes, bridging, getting his head to the floor. So a lot of times we have this sense of security where we want to keep the body triangle. So a really good option from here is to go into arm pummels from the back, okay, from here. Rene was doing a good job of posting his hand like so. And I think what Nikki was trying to do, and you know, maybe I'm 100% wrong, was he started going over the face like so and doing a good job of covering the face and starting to expose the neck on the bottom side. Now, as he exposed the neck on the bottom side, he started extracting and letting him fall into the opposite side of the strangle hand. Now, I think on one of them, he got really close. He switched sides, but Rene was able to tuck that jaw. He tried to lock, and I just don't think it was enough. But on paper, in theory, this is always an excellent option when you feel like you can't unlock your legs and go to trap. From here, you go over the face, right? So you try to get top hand position so he can't block you. You go over the face, sorry, Drew. You start exposing the opposite side of his neck. Now, as your hand switches, your head also needs to switch sides in order for this to work. So I lift my elbow. Elbow. Look how I have the meat of the hand. I lift the elbow and as I switch head, or I'm sorry, as I switch his head to the other side, my head and arm switch together. And I'm either trying to get this at the tricep or behind the shoulder because I know what's coming next. His hands are going to start coming and from here we want to start punching hands down, covering our, our, uh, our hand with our wrist then our form, and then eventually get to that rear naked. And once we're here, we're always looking to extend the hips, pull our shoulder blades back, and once we do those two things, then we can start rotating that elbow and squeezing our biceps and putting this guy to sleep. You can tap, you know, you don't have to be a tough guy on camera. So again, full speed, I have the body triangle, I feel uncomfortable locking, no problem. Go over the face, I expose, switch sides, get the strangle on the opposite side. All right, karate chop. Yeah, come watch. Alexa, pause. Uh, so you go like crucifix, crucifix okay. and then I throw this arm fit over, and then he's gonna roll with, and you got, the key is not letting him get up, so you gotta like cover his head. Yeah. And then you just come up. Where's the finish? Well, the finish is usually the arm different. Dude, you did it so cool. And right now, yeah, of course I can't do it. <laughs> Who, Who did you it? have to teach it? Who did it? He. Oh, he did he it. He got it on someone the other night. It was so fucking cool. Yeah, I did it today, too. Let's see. Come through. So you gotta keep, if, it, if the arm, like, I don't know what you did, but somehow you. You want me to put it here? Yeah, if you do this, then I don't have the moving board. So I have to keep it, like, trapped. I'm okay. Yeah, so, like, I'm here. 
Yeah, so I gotta oh. keep it. I gotta keep it trapped here. If it comes out of out of, I guess if it comes like here, it's not gonna work. So it's gotta be trapped with the inside leg, and then you just come up and. Well, teach it again. You're really good at it, but you don't know how to teach it. So teach it again. Yeah. It's gonna make you way better. Yeah. Understanding what it is you're actually doing versus what you think. So you're you doing. come crucifix. I think you have to transfer it my arm. Yeah, yeah, but let him figure that out. Okay. Yeah, oh switch. yeah, that's so I, switch. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it comes on the inside. I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you have it. Yep. Wow. You didn't teach it. Ooh. Well, that's part of learning how to teach, yeah. right? But you see how like what yeah. he thinks he's doing versus what he's actually doing is way different, and that's what <laughs> separates high-level yeah, teachers from competitors. Were you always a teacher? Like me? I was a competitor teacher, but not an actual teacher for a long time. I usually get seatbelt or try to get seatbelt once, which doesn't really That's what matter. makes Gordon so good. Yeah, yeah, and then teach. Will, teach what you grab? I just like, a lot of high-level guys, I don't even grab what they anything. show I just like versus what they here. do is completely different. And then, yeah, cover the head. They're intuitive learning. And then, and like, actually, extend your natural. leg out. Yeah. That's fucking cool. Yeah. But see, like, you doing what you just did is just going to make that move way better. Yeah. I guess if the arm is straight, it doesn't work as well, too. You can armbar the arm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I find myself there a lot when people don't want to give hooks to crucifix, and then I just, I don't want a crucifix, because I feel like I lose it a lot, but then that's a really fucking cool option. JT is really good at it. Or work remote. Um, okay, guys, drill. <laughs> Luke, how are you keeping the hand <laughs> rolling? So keep losing. Uh, like, can you do it to me? Yeah. Do you work Tuesday, Luke? Yeah. So, you get it. Huck. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Okay. okay. Huck. How long is it? Yeah. The last one. Yeah. Are you guys going to stay there? So you're, you're going, you're switching from outside to inside. Yeah, the okay. inside. Like, so.